Hey Flosstube, how you guys doing? My name is Lori, also known as Sharky Stitcher on this channel and on Instagram. For those of you that are new here, hello, welcome. It's fun in here. We talk about cross stitching and other various little craftinesses. Uh, those of you that have come back, welcome back. Thankfully I didn't scare you guys away, so yay. Uh, those of you that watched me last week, uh, we talked about the stuff that I'm planning on starting on 2022. The list was pretty, oh, <laughs> long shall we say i doubt i will actually get to start absolutely everything on that list but i'm gonna try <laughs> um and uh, i kind of alluded to where there's other things i want to start and i've got a few things that have solidly jumped themselves into please start me now <laughs> so i'll probably show you a few of those um i've also gotten a little bit of haul nothing not too much really uh we've got a happy dance for tonight so yay that's gonna be fun and then I've got a long-awaited whip started. So yeah, I'm excited for that. So let's start out with the new additions to what I hope to start in 2022. So the one that is, oh my gosh, just, I don't know what possessed me. I think it was, I probably saw someone else's whip on Instagram or something like that. And this is a design by Autumn Lane Stitchery. It was a stitch along, meaning they released it in parts over the course of a year. I didn't join the stitch along at first because I typically don't like buying charts by parts because that's a lot of printing because I'm an old fashioned printer person. <laughs> so, but now everything's out, so which I'm glad. I did end up buying it uh, a little ways into it just because I was like, okay, you've hooked me. And basically it is Dark Queen of the Seas. She's very spooky and dark looking. Now, this is only one variation because one fun thing they did with this stitch along is it's kind of got a choose your own adventure component to it. The first one of that was the boobage. She can either have a top on or she can be topless. <laughs> uh, she has two face options. She has like, there's a whole accessory pack you can buy for like changing her hair color. Um, I've seen people do it in green, blue, pink, white, black, all, lots of different colors. Um, you can do other things with her crown that she's got up there. I'm not planning on stitching that crown just because I don't know why it's floating. <laughs> that and, um, there's a Facebook group for the stitch along, which I just joined because, you know, I'm so like, oh my gosh, I'm wanting to start this now. And there was one variation that one of the stitchers there made like this crown and she shared the files with it. So I thought that was cool. So I'm wanting to do that. And I also like the coral horns. And then you can have either a skull in here or this like magic stuff. And I think that's it for the optionals. So what I'm planning on, um, I'm planning on probably not stitching these because I like the circular motion of her ink <laughs> type stuff here. So I don't think I'm doing these little corner pieces. I am changing the trident to silver. One other stitcher did that and she shared her conversion. So I'm probably just going to try what she used that. And it's a uh, DMC, is it Etoile, how it's pronounced? This stuff. I've never used it before. So I'm intrigued and want to try that. And it's, you know, like sparkly a little bit. So, yeah. So... Typically, I don't like using what other people have used. You know, I like to do things on my own, whatever. But I've never used that stuff before, so I'm game to try it. Um, let's see. I'm going to do the face the way it's on there. Also, one thing I'm considering. Her eyes, they look so cool because they're over one. You guys know I typically like to do over one skin. Um, basically, that's where instead of one stitch, I stitch four, basically. And it just gives the skin more of a skin-like texture. You'll see that for my happy dance tonight. And with her, I'm conflicted. At first, it's because of these little coral outcroppings on her because I don't think I want to do those over one. I think it would look more like they're growing off of her if they're not over one. And at first, I was like, well, that might be an issue because there's like some color change stuff that goes on there. But looking at the chart, I can kind of see where a good spot for me to switch from over two to over one is. So I think I probably will stitch her over one. Her hair. I'm conflicted on her hair. I like the purple, but I've seen a few other variations I like too. There's also some ombre effects that are really cool. So I'm not sure. I will be stitching the magic bit, but I'm going to be playing with what colors this um, 
thing is because I don't I don't like the starkness of the black that and I think it needs more sparkle as per usual <laughs> so I'll be doing that um also one person um like I said there can be a skull here too she put the skull down here and I love that because I thought it was awesome because it gives her that little creepy factor and you know it was like well the skull's cool and I like the you know spooky vibe of it but I think ultimately I like the little the like she's making magic not like she's holding some dude's head you know a little Shakespearean type thing so but I like the skull so when I saw someone put it down there I'm like eh, I might do that too <laughs> and then the boobage very torn on what I want to do there. I would love to do the bare boobs because you never see that in cross stitch ever. <laughs> and, but her top's pretty too. So I'm torn, but I have kind of an idea of what I might try. So I'm not going to say anything yet, just in case I can't make it work. So, but yeah, I'd really like to get her started. And mm, fabric. Um, so this was kind of a collaboration between Autumn Lane Stitchery and, uh, is it Autumn Lane Stitchery? Yes, with a Y. Just making sure I wasn't pronouncing that wrong because sometimes I add syllables where there's not. I'm from the Midwest. <laughs> um, and Leslie from Under the Sea Fabrics. So she had like a accessory pack, which I guess I'll show you. There's not a whole lot. Well, I mean, so it's got some metallics here, as you can see. A fair bit of beads, freshwater pearls, some crystals. Lots of fun, twisty purple bugle beads. I'm excited to use those. Those are pretty. Um, and then she made a special fabric for it. And this is called Bewitched. Of course, I got mine in opalescent. And I love this fabric. And at first, I was all like, yeah, this is what I'm going to use for her. But looking at her, she's got a lot of purple and blue in her. So she's going to kind of blend in. And I saw another stitcher doing her on more of a turquoise. And I thought that made her pop a lot more, especially some of the hot pinks she's got in her. So I'm kind of digging that. And I do have one piece of fabric here. It's not opalescent, but I like the color of it. And you guys might have seen this before. I had this posted on Instagram before. Uh, this is from, oh, this is a fabric girl. She posts things on Etsy, not Etsy, um, eBay. Oksana Lopatina. It's, uh, her tags all say crazy hamster now. I've mentioned her multiple times on my videos. I like her stuff. But I'm kind of digging this piece for her. So I'm trying not to lose my tag. Because it was on the middle, so I moved it because I didn't want my fabric coming up. But I'm thinking she's going to be cool on that. And I love the, the dimensions in this piece here. And I think that will really set the purples and the pinks off. And the blues, really. Because there's such a greenish cast to this. If I could land my hands on a piece of fabric that is this color with this much modeling, because oh, I love hand-dyed fabrics with that modeling effect. <laughs> and sometimes it's a little more subtle, which I don't like. Um, if I could find a piece like this, exactly like this, that's sparkly, I might be down for it. But I kind of really want to get started on it, and I really like the colors of this piece. So I might just suck it up and be like, we ain't doing opalescent for her. So, that girl was not in my last video. I actually didn't even have her all printed out yet. And I actually didn't even have everything downloaded. I had to go back and look for things. Because when I jumped in, I think I jumped in when part four was released. So, the way they did that was the first four parts I could download off of Etsy. But then after that, as each month's part came out, it was emailed to you. So, I had to... I think I had downloaded all the Etsy ones first, so then I had to go into my email and <laughs> download everything. So, but I'm really wanting to get her started. Right now, she's not available on Etsy because they took it down once the stitch along ended, but they're releasing like a hard copy. And just because they have all those different options, it's taking a little bit for them to put it together. But I heard they thought it's coming out this month soon now i don't know uh, depending on when you're watching this video it might have been out a long time ago today's valentine's day by the way actually no it's the 15th because it's past midnight so february 15th 2022 so if you're watching much later than this it's probably available either on etsy or their website i'm not really sure but um one nice thing though was when they released the last part at least for me with printing all the things when they released the last part there was a bunch of back stitching so they 
I pretty much could print the whole chart in one go. I didn't have to print, you know, like her top and then her head and then, you know, the leaves and then, you know, like I didn't have to print out something for each part. So I did print a couple of the face things that came out when I first got her just because they're kind of right in the middle. So I didn't want to have to worry about page breaks because it's like four pages, like broke into quadrants. So that would have cut her face and like her torso in half. So I have the piece where that's all one. So I don't have to worry about matching things up. That and I've got a nice zoomed in view of her face since her eyes are over one. So I am curious to see her how her face is going to look with the over one skin. I do really love her skin tone. It's that weird blue green zombie not human skin color. I think that's really cool. So She's one I'm really wanting to stitch. I don't have the floss yet for her, and I'm going to wait till I have that to decide on fabric as well. And then there's another piece. I've had this kitted up for a while now, and I just shot and uploaded my Teresa Wensler, kitting up a Teresa Wensler video. So that's gotten me in the mood for Teresa Wensler stuff, and I'm in the mood to do a dragon. So um, this design here, Dragon Ride. It's in the magazine here, or I think for a minute you could have gotten it off Patterns Online. It's not available anymore because dragons are naughty. <laughs> so this one, ah, let me find a better picture because it's got a Celtic knotwork border on it too. So there's that. So I really like that. Now look at the colors in the dragon. Lots, lots of colors. And I have stitched this design already. And then I, I, I had also entered it in the fair for my county and it won best of show in first place in its stitching category so that blew my mind um fabric wise the last time i stitched on a plain old neutral this time though things are going to be different so at first i was thinking maybe just like a parchment type color because most Therese wenslers have some kind of a gold hue to them but I'm just kind of dabbling with colors. Let me show you real quick. I got all the floss sorted so you know what colors we're working with here. Without dumping them all on the floor. Yeah, so there's the colors. Blues, greens, purples, golds. Fun stuff. So I have two pieces of fabric I am considering that I have in stash here. Well, this one I ordered. I'm kind of sentimental about this piece because... For a stupid reason. <laughs> um, when I first came back to stitching, because I had a stitching hiatus where I quit stitching for like a decade. And when I came back in, I was like, oh my God, the fabrics are so much fun now. Because back before, like, it, there was over dyed fabrics, but they were kind of new. Opalescents were kind of new. Like, it was, it was also very new, you know, for the most part. So a lot of the fabrics we used back then were solid colors for the most part. Well, when I came back, I'm like, oh my God, they have so much cooler colors and fabric. And this is one that I found that I liked. And I remember I was thinking about this for Dragon Ride because I kind of was thinking about a purpley color. And this is Picture This Plus Heather. And this was, I remember it took a while to ship too. And this was like my first fabric order when I came back in the stitching from my hiatus. And I... I could not remember what type of fabric I liked. It was like, because, you know, I was like, I'll do even weave. I just knew I didn't do Ada, you know. So this is a 28 count Lugana. And it was one of those where I'm like, what was my favorite fabric again? And I couldn't remember. I'm thinking now that I've gotten back into it, I'm thinking it was Belfast for the most part. Uh, a linen more than an even weave. But I do still like this piece. And I don't know, I'm considering it. The thing is, Dragon Ride's not that big. So I don't really need this big of a piece for it. So I'm like, do I really want to waste this? Because you know how long it takes to get picture this plus fabrics now. And I have not seen this particular color in stock anywhere. So I know I couldn't get my hands on it soon. I could just place an order with it and just be like, okay, see you in six months. <laughs> this spot's really pretty. I like that. So just to kind of give you an idea, color-wise, what this would look like all together. Can you guys even see that? So yeah, some of the purples would blend in, but it's not a very purple-dominant dragon. It's mostly in some of the feathers of the wings, and there's some colors in the, um, the rider's cloak. And I, I remember from stitching this the last time I did it, the rider's holding like a crystal ball, 
and that's kind of purple colors. Also, the rider is completely stitched over one, which is kind of cool. It's charted over one, so I'll have to convert. So here's kind of the fabric I bought for it, and I'm considering it. It might be cool. But then the other one I'm thinking about, this is a Fortnite's fabric, fabric of the month. Um, I joined their, this was last year's opalescent category, which was called Expensive Rich. And this is the color Bank Rolls. Uh, this is a fabric of the month color, so I don't think you can order it right now. It's very similar to the one I just showed you. Only I would say that this is more of a white undertone, and that's more of like a cream kind of undertone. So this is mainly purple and white. I fold it in half so the light doesn't shine through. I'm thinking about this one too. I do really like this color. I love Fortnite fabrics. <laughs> I've been having fun watching their videos lately because they just, they crack me up. So yeah, that's an option. This is more of a subtle kind of color. A little bit softer. Puppy dog snoring right now. <laughs> so I think either of these would do. I mean, this one's a 28 count linen, so it's a cashel. So let me just hold them up side by side so y'all can be like, I like this one better. See, very similar, but this one's a little warmer. And this one's got a little bit more of a cold cast. I don't know, honestly. I'm kind of maybe thinking this one, since I did kind of order it for it. But I do want to do something cool with this, this piece here. So. Alrighty. So yeah, it was funny. I was watching um, Fort, the Married with Stitches is their YouTube channel. And they, for a while, they were doing like this hot sauce thing where they were trying all these different kinds of hot sauces. And it got me in the mood for um, making fofalo wings, which is basically where you take cauliflower and put batter on it, bake it uh, till it's crispy. Then you put it in like a hot sauce and then you bake it again. So it's like an alternative to buffalo wings for the most part, but it's cauliflower but I always put like sriracha and stuff in it. So it's a little spicy and stuff. So it made me hungry for that. So I started making that like, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night. Okay. So those are the main ones that kind of jumped into, ooh, ooh, I want to start those now. And you know, for most part they were kitted up except for I don't have the floss for the uh, Dark Queen of the Sea. So. Um, that's going to take us to a little bit of haul. So this haul just arrived today, which I was surprised. And this is from Under the Sea Fabrics, um, Leslie. She always, whenever there's a new Bella Filipina, Mirabella, whatever, she, she posts it. And you can order the bead pack, the fabric pack, the fiber pack, and the chart. And for this lovely lady, Lakapati. I wanted it all. <laughs> so this is a Filipino deity, I believe. It says, golden rice grains dance in abundance in vast fields of the valley. Her hands caress trees, bearing bountiful fruits, both tart and sweet. She is a protector of crops and farm animals. She is Lakapati, deity of fertility, and she gave agriculture to mankind. Isn't she gorgeous though? Oh, those rich colors. Oh. She kind of looks Hindu to me a little bit, um, just like with the shawl and everything, but you know, Philippines really is not that far from there. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I really love her. I actually really like her fabric too. I was kind of eyeballing. This is Woodland, I think, by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. I definitely think the green looks really good with her because of that yellow and the reds. Ooh, yummy. I love good, deep, rich colors. So I got the bead pack too. We'll probably convert to Delica's except for, you know, these fat, chunky beads I'll probably keep. Um, there's some, where are they at? Oh, they're under the sticker. There's some bugle beads right there that I'll keep. Uh, most of the others I think I can find substitutions for. These ones are kind of weird just because it's like a metallic mixture. There's like pewter, bronze, dull gold. So, but yeah, I'll probably, probably convert to Delicas. Not many fibers for this one. There's the metallics and one silk. 
fair bit of beads though, so I'm torn on opalescent or not opalescent with her. I'm thinking probably opalescent, just because y'all know. That's usually what I always want anyways. If I don't get opalescent, I'm like, ah, oh, why didn't I get opalescent? Okay, this is something I actually bought a few weeks ago, but I forgot to show it. So I had mentioned before that I was looking at my um, Victoria Sampler designs and didn't have as many as I thought. Well, one series that I want to stitch all of is the elements. I have stitched Crimson Fire. Water is my favorite element, so I had to grab it and I found one on eBay that had the accessory pack with it. So I was like, yes. So um, I'm not gonna hunt down the accessory packs too crazily because since they are no longer being made, people are kind of charging a lot for them. And I'm like, that defeats the purpose of having an accessory pack. I can just buy all the materials, you know, and probably pay just as much as what people are kind of charging for them now. So this one, the price though was decent. So I went for it. I still need to get earth, I think. I have air, I believe. I don't have the accessory pack, but I'll probably just buy the threads. So I still need the earth design. I love the Bargello at the bottom of this one. It's one of my favorite kind of little design elements. Whew. Okay, a um, few more things that I also ordered, and I think I forgot to tell you guys, if you guys have seen them already, sorry. <laughs> but this was kind of a unicorn for me. Not that I was hunting it aggressively, but it was like on my list and it was out of print. So I was just kind of stalking looking for a decent price. And this is Shimmering Mermaid by Mirabilia. She is out of print. And I remember when she first came out, I wasn't too into her because I didn't like that her tail had a J shape to it because it looked very static. But seeing close-ups of her, I really like the patterning in her tail. So I decided I needed to get her. And I found her in one of the stash unloading groups for... $30 or something like that. And she's been going for a lot more on eBay. So I thought, eh, just do it. Just so you have her. Don't know when I'm starting her though. There's lots of other mermaids that are in the way before her. And then I had this wild hair during Christmas time where I was really wanting to stitch Christmassy designs. And this queen, this is Christmas queen. Um, I don't think that's, hang on. Wait, look. So I think Christmas queen is the sub name. Royal, Royal Holiday is the real name. Okay. So yeah, Royal Holiday. She's not out of print, but the Queens are going out of print like left and right. So I thought just get her before she goes out of print. That and she has Whisper. Does she? I think she has Whisper. Yeah. There's Whisper in this chart. I love using Whisper because it's fun. Texture. It's fun. Okay. So basically that's all the haul, except for I do have a pat another package from Leslie by Under the Sea Fabrics that is on the way. That's got some, basically a big pile of fabric in it. <laughs> Not really for anything specific. She had posted there was a couple discontinued fabrics that she had had that she was re-releasing and I really liked some of them. And there's a few more like I'm getting for potential Chatelaine uh, usage, so. That was, that's supposed to arrive, I think, Thursday this week or something. So you guys will just have to see it next video. Alrighty. So um, I guess another slight haul thing though, and this is another thing that I didn't just get it. I just have forgotten to mention it, but it's uh, uh, pertinent for this design I've got on my whip stand here. So my mom frequents Amish auctions and I go over to her house one day and there's this big old box by her front door. She's like, oh, that's for you. And I was like, it's not my birthday. It's not Christmas. Like, what is what is this? And basically, long story short, she got me a serger. <laughs> so I told you guys, she really wants me to quilt really bad. <laughs> so she's given me this Cadillac of a sewing machine, which even does monogramming and stuff. Very fancy, very above my pay grade, and I'm terrified of it. <laughs> And now I have a serger. So, which is also, I don't really need it, especially if I can get the zigzag function to work on the sewing machine. But it is super nice. Cause like this fabric here for, this is rainforest lace. I'll show it to you in a little bit. I had a full yard, but I didn't need a full yard. So I had to cut it. So I used the serger to needing, neaten up my ends. And then I grabbed a bunch of other random pieces that needed it. And I'm staring at a few in front of me that I should have gotten too. <laughs> But so yeah, I have a serger now, so I've named it the beast. 
So yeah, I feel like a real grown up stitcher because I have all these tools that make all my stuff look super professional, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna count that as haul. <laughs> so yeah, I have a serger now. Got the Beast and I got the Cadillac, the scary Cadillac. Okay, so I think let's go into the happy dance. So my finish, which I think I showed you guys the last time, is Pisces from the Zodiac Girls series by Nora Corbet. Isn't she gorgeous? Um, some changes I made. Um, her skin is over one. <laughs> Now, I did a technique, I don't even know what it's called, but basically, when you take stitches that are two over two squares, and then convert them to over one, it can lead looking very blocky, kind of Minecraft pixelated. So I fudged the edges where the squares were so that they would blend a little smoother. I probably should have done that right there, but interface I did that so you're not really seeing any square shapes through here so I did not chart anything I don't know what the method is called stipling or uh what does Luda call it she calls it something like one every other or something like I can't remember what it is but I know some people take the time to chart it I don't I just eyeball it which is another reason I hate doing over one skin because I have to really keep track of where I'm going <laughs> Cause it's easy to lose it because where typically there'd be a square i might have stitched only three stitches so sometimes it's hard to be like where where is this spot so yeah it's my fault it's my fault you know if i was prepping a little bit more it'd be all fine um i did add some treasures up here so this part up here this is a cube a swarovski cube and this is a Swaros swarovski eh, words are fun swarovski uh teardrop in paradise shine i just thought it looked proper there i switched the beads to Delicas, for the most part, except for these pearls. The pearls are still the same, and these big, um, gosh, what are these? They're not Magnifica beads, but uh, they are kind of an opalescent type bead. I left those. One fun thing that I did do, do I have it nearby? I don't think I do. Um, I used my typical Nymo beading thread. But for this part, I have a dark purple color. It kind of matches this spot right here. So for this area here, instead of using the gray Nymo, I didn't think it would show through the fabric, but just in case, uh, for these beads, I used the purple. So, I mean, I don't even think you can really tell, even if you look close. But yeah, isn't she pretty? I love her. And she's so sparkly. This fabric, by the way, is Galaxy by Mystic Fabrics. I love it. And as soon as I can find me one of those shipping tubes that is at least two feet wide, she is going to be taking a trip to Utah with Taj Mahal Mandala, which is also a finish of mine, to go to Rensel Framings. So that's exciting. But yeah, I got to get that package. So, um... I like to borrow the habit from Kyle Reichenmeyer from Stitching and Sound where he does a shot for every finish. So I have a special bottle with me. I bought this in Costa Rica and this is coffee liquor. Now, uh, the first time I was in Costa Rica, I brought some of this home and I was like, oh my God, this is delicious. So I knew when I was there, I wanted to try and find some more of this again. And it's funny, it's got a little polymer clay swordfish on there. They had a bunch of other animals like frogs and monkeys and sloths and stuff, but I was like, I need the fish. <laughs> so, um, but this is 63 proof or 31 and a half percent alcohol. So this is pretty strong stuff. So I have my handy dandy shot glass with me. I'm not going to be downing this whole bottle. I don't know. Maybe I will. Cause Gosh, it's been a long time since I had it. Maybe it's not maybe it's not as good as I remember it being, but I'm going to do a shot of it to celebrate my finish. So, cuz the past few times I've had finishes, I have um not had alcohol on me. <laughs> so, I've shot lame things like vitamin water. So, but this time we're doing it proper. So, I kind of left this in here just for when I have this happy dance. I finished it after I got back. I always feel like I need to shake this up, but <laughs> all right. Oh. 
it smells like if you'd smell um, vanilla extract. That's what it smells like with a whiff, whiff of coffee. I actually have a cup of coffee in here too, just in case this stuff is potent as hell. Look, 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 look. Let's start with that. All righty, slangeva. Oh, that's yummy. Yeah, that's yummy. Oh, I'll save some more of that for later. Not later tonight. Oh, it makes my throat so warm. Oh, I love alcohol like that. Mm, I should have brought bought some more. And I'm going to chase it with some Costa Rican coffee because I still have a bag that I brought back because when I um, was in Costa Rica, I was there for a massage class. I'm just giving you guys a recap if you guys haven't watched my videos before. I'm a massage therapist. And I went to Costa Rica a few weeks ago for a CEU class where I was training in um, a different modality. So we stayed at a massage school and we had dorms. And we had kitchenettes there, so before class started, I went grocery shopping and I got, you know, just a bag of coffee because we had coffee makers and stuff, rather than going out and buying coffee or anything like that. And I love Costa Rican coffee. Like, well, the first time I went there, like, now Costa Rican terrazzo is what I like to drink. So, I had bought, you know, a bag of coffee. And then when I was leaving, I'm like, I can't throw this away. So I just stuffed it in my bag, you know, and brought it home with me. And I'm sad. I'm almost out of it. Which funny story. I don't think I told you guys this. <laughs> uh, little little slight side, you know, non-stitchy relating things. But come on, the story's funny. So um, basically, your girl got her ass frisked at the airport on her way back. <laughs> and um, I'm going to explain it as it came to me to see if you guys are like shocked as I was. So um, basically when I came back from Costa Rica, my flight, I had to fly to Austin, Texas and then get a connecting flight in Dallas and then spend the night in Dallas before I flew back to Ohio. So I get a notification that my flight to Austin has been delayed and that I was going to miss my connection to Dallas. Oh crap. So I look online, no worries, there's another flight an hour later. But I had a hotel in Dallas and I am stingy, AKA cheap as fuck when it comes to hotels. <laughs> so I'm one of them people, if I land in the airport at 11 and my next flight's at seven, I am sleeping in the airport. Because by the time you get to the hotel, get unpacked, get yourself settled, get to sleep, you only get like four hours of sleep. So like I'm not paying over a hundred dollars to only sleep for four hours. You know, that and you got to pay usually to get to the hotel and pay to get back. So I just usually crash in the airport. But for this particular thing, I was supposed to arrive in Dallas at like 645 or something. No, no. Okay, that's when I arrived in Austin. I'm supposed to get to Dallas at like 730 or something. And then my next flight the next morning didn't leave till 10 a.m. So that's plenty of time to sleep. Uh, I, there was a free shuttle, so that wasn't an extra cost. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just getting a hotel. So I was kind of twitching a little bit about catching a later connection because I'm like, that's shortening the amount of time that I can be chilling and relaxing in the hotel because I specifically booked a hotel that had a bathtub so I could have myself a spo a soak, <laughs> you know? So I was a little twitchy about that, but you know, not the end of the world. We're talking about an hour here. So but anyways, we get to Austin and we only were 20 minutes late. So that meant I could probably make my original connection. And I ended up with this family of four that had the same situation where they had moved to a later flight. Oh my gosh, we're not an hour late. Let's see if we can get back on our original flight. So after we went through customs, we're booking it to the counter to try and see if we can get back on our original flight because I had confirmed on, you know, the next flight. So she says, we'll put you on standby. You have to go through security again. And if you don't make it, you'll have a spot on the next flight, which I'm like, okay, no big deal. But I wanted to make my flight because I wanted to get to my hotel so I could sleep. Well, isn't that a recipe for disaster at an airport to have plans? It's kind of like having a labor plan. It's not going to go, <laughs> you know, the way you want it to. 
So I go through security and when you your bags go through the x-ray machine, they go one of two ways. They go the way where it's enjoy your flight and they go the other way where we're looking through all your crap to see what you have. Both of my bags, which I had my carry-on and then I had that little bin they give you that had my shoes and my phone and my um, personal item and like my hoodie. And so both of those get pulled to the back. So I'm like, here we go. And so the chick, you know, she's, we're, she's between glass. She's digging through my bag and she made a beeline right for a bag of sand. Because I have this family tradition where we like to collect sand from the beach and then we put it in jars and label it. And it's really cool seeing the different types of sand from different places. So sen sentimentalness, my grandmother started doing it. So she pulls my bag of sand out and my first thought was a granular substance in a baggie. She probably thinks it's drugs. <laughs> so she waves this wand over it and then she puts this wand in this machine. Something comes up on a screen. She comes over and she's like got this bag. She's like, what is this? <laughs> and I'm standing there and I realize they have weird stuff. People do, you know, try to smuggle crazy things. Like I understand. But at the same time, I'm like, there's bits of shell, there's coral. I'm like, to me, it was like not a huge mystery that it was a bag of sand. And I said, it's sand from the beach, you know? So then she starts sprinkling some of it out and she gets this liquid that, and she like gets litmus paper and stuff. She's like testing it. And then I started thinking, oh shit, you know, what if someone did some Coke on the beach and I don't know, somehow it got in that, like, oh my gosh, like I'm thinking she thinks it's drugs, you know, like crap. And I'm also thinking, I need to make this flight. Can I go? <laughs> so um, then this big burly security guy comes over to me. And he's like, ma'am. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Did it, did, is it drugs? <laughs> I think it's drugs. Am I going to get arrested? And he's like, um, we have tested the substance in your bag. And it has come back positive twice as a potential explosive. <laughs> I'm like, What? <laughs> It's sand, you know, like, yeah, it's volcanic sand, but for, for real, like, and, you know, I was waiting for, with it, you know, it's drugs, you know, like, and so he's like, so we have to detain you and pat you down. So I had to get the old pat down because I had sand from the beach in my bag. <laughs> and I was annoyed because I'm trying to make this flight. But at the same time, I was also like, <laughs> this is going to be a good story. <laughs> so um, basically they said, if you want to keep it, you're going to have to take this bag back to the counter and check it, which as you know, I was running for this connection, I knew there was going to be no time. That, and I knew they'd charge me like $125 or something to check a bag at the airport. No way. So I was like, just chuck it. And I remember I got a little, little, little whiffy, sniffly because it's like, eh, it's a family tradition. I don't have any sand from Costa Rica. It was going to be so, yeah, I'm just, just lit, little, little dramatic, you know, but brushed it off like it's just sand. I guess I'm just going to come back and get more sand. <laughs> so um, she stuffs everything back in my bag, hands it to me, and is all like, have a nice flight. And I'm like, you still have all my other shit <laughs> right there. Yeah, I, I, You got my shoes. You got my cell phone. Like, you got my passport. Uh, I ain't going nowhere until you go through that. And I was kind of like, can you at least hand me my shoes so I can get them strapped on? Because they were like sandals that like Velcroed around your ankle. I was like, can you at least give me my shoes so I can get ready to run as soon as you're done? And yeah, they, they don't care. <laughs> so, um, which I understand. They, they see some weird shit. So she's digging through my other stuff. What does she pull out of that bag? My coffee. And I'm like, you're just going after all my granulated substances, aren't you? And I'm like, please don't ask me what this is. It's in a bag clearly labeled coffee, and I'm sure you can smell it as soon as you open it. Well, the coffee must have passed the wand test. So it ended up being allowed to go and have a nice flight. And I ran to my gate with my shoes halfway on. The gate started at zero. I had to run to gate 30. <laughs> I was the last person on the plane and they started taking off three, five minutes after I sat down. So I just made it, but I got to sit in my bathtub for a little extra longer than I thought I was going to. So it was worth the run. So anyways, that's my story about how I got patted down for having sand in my bag from the beach. So yeah, that was fun. Oh. And now I'm sad that my coffee's almost gone.
At least I didn't throw that away though. Okay, so now let's move on to my whip. So this is Rainforest Lace. Oh, this was a long awaited project. Though actually before I go into it, I almost forgot some more haul, but I'll have to point it out once I get this bad girl off the frame because she a big girl. This is actually the same scroll that I use for um, Serengeti. Okay, so let me get the chart out of the way so y'all can't copy it. Okay, so here's my start. I'm pretty happy with it. The central part is very blue, pink, and green. So yeah, you don't get the full effect. The color of the fabric, eh, well, you're seeing through it a little bit, but it's not, eh, it's not too bad. Kind of rainbowy, but predominantly green and blue for the most part. I like the little bits of yellow that are up here though at the top. Okay, so the haul that I got, I got extenders for my scroll frame. Here's the typical size. So that's where it usually was. And it's super nice because I can even go up two more slots here. So once this thing gets bigger and when I'm beading, oh, I'm not gonna have to roll over as many beads. And that's gonna be awesome when I'm on Serengeti because this is the same bars for Serengeti and Serengeti's big. Like Serengeti takes up the whole bar and I've got like a little bit of breathing room here. Which side did I surge? Did I surge this side? I can't remember. It might be the part that's rolled up, but I used my new serger to surge the sides of my fabric. So it's all nice and neat. And these bars are nice. Like I really like this frame setup. It's the um, Easy Stitch Frame by American Heritage. And what I like about them is they're so customizable because you just buy the parts. And I'm thinking I only paid like 20 bucks and it just came with, you know, a pair of these. It was just 20 bucks. I just, they feel so nice, especially compared to like the old scroll frames that you buy at like Joann's and it's got like a nut and a bolt, you know, and it just doesn't feel as nice on your hands. These knobs are so smooth and I like the Velcro system. I did also buy a whole nother roll, I think 12 yards, 12 yards. Let me see. I think I got it right here. Maybe it's 12 feet. 12 yards sounds like a lot. Actually it is 12 yards. <laughs> So I bought a whole nother thing of this because obviously I use a lot <laughs> on these pieces. I still have a fair bit left. That's the only downfall to this um, setup is you do have to keep buying the tape for the fabric because once it's been on this fabric, you probably aren't getting it off. I mean, there's been a few times I've been able to peel it off, but then the tackiness is compromised. So I don't know if it works for other pieces. You could try though. So that's the only downfall for this is you have to keep buying these but I like the convenience of them. And these aren't outrageously expensive. I'm thinking, there might be one that's three yards that costs $10 and maybe this one's 25 or something. I'm not sure. But for me, it's definitely worth it because uh, this piece is big and it's gonna be on the frame for a while. So that really spreads the cost out a fair bit. Let's sneak a peek a loo at my new clay by Kim. My little pink dragon, isn't she cute? I like the dainty delicateness of her. That and I like that she looks like she's thinking deep thoughts <laughs> with her tail on her chin. So yeah, she's cute, I like her. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, plans for this. Um, I would like to finish the cross stitching on the central portion, which is pretty much outlined here for the most part. This central portion is pretty big. And there's a lot of speciality stitches in the center. And there's a lot of beads. I would like to finish the cross stitching, but I'm feeling the call of so many other projects. I might end up putting this one aside before I get to that part. I mean, I'm really glad I got pretty much the framework laid out because that was mainly the goal. So I think that's pretty good. I might just stick with that. Um, next piece I'm going to rotate off on. Ooh, that's a good question. So, hmm, I'm thinking probably one of my mermaids. I might visit um, one of my uh, like Renaissance mermaid or something because she's so close to done. Not 
not really that close to done. Like it's one of those when I have like a bout of like good stitching where, oh my God, I got a lot of work done. And then I look, look at like the next thing I want to do. And I'm like, oh, that's not going to take as long as the part that you just did. But the part that I just did, I was really like amped up, you know, so it went quick. So maybe it won't go so quick the next time, you know. Um, I'd also really like to start some of the things that I discussed the last video. You know, I really want to start, which one is it? Really like to get Temptress of the Cursed Sea going. Fairy Idyll needs to go. I'd like to get some more time on Fairy Moon. Um, I typically work on a piece until I'm not liking it no more, and then I work on something else or until I hit a goal. But I've noticed if I stop stitching on them before I'm ready, like I don't really feel ready to leave this piece because I'm still enjoying it. But if I leave it while I'm still enjoying it, then I want to come back to it more. Whereas if I stitch on it until I get sick of it, then I'm just like, get away. <laughs> so um, I'm kind of wanting to put this away before I'm ready because I think that'll help motivate me to jump on something else. So <laughs> there's that. Anyways, um, just posted my video for Teresa Wensler, how to kit one up. I have been requested to go over how to convert skin to over one. I think that would probably be a good video. Uh, so that's on the agenda. Um, I'd kind of like to go over some beads again, you know, like some different types of treasures and different ways to sew them on, specifically chatelaine type stuff. And I also want to do a video on my fabric stash because I really need to organize it. So I think if I have the intention of doing a video, that'll make me organize it more. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's stuff to look at in the future. Oh, also in the future for me, I had mentioned, uh, oh, several videos ago that I'm getting braces and that is still happening. I was actually supposed to get them last week, but I bumped it back just because I had just come back from Costa Rica and I want my bank accounts to fatten up just a little bit more. And I have a cleaning scheduled in March anyways. So I kind of am like, why don't I just get my cleaning and then get the grill put on? So that's the plan there. I'm excited, but also dreading because I, I hate my teeth being messed with at all. Like the dentist is the worst, you know, so the orthodontist, ugh, you know, just, ugh, it's just going to be such a pain in the butt. I don't know. I've never had braces before. My brother had them growing up. His teeth were like going every which way. Mine were straight until my wisdom teeth came in and then I got some crowding. So that was annoying <laughs> because, you know, when you call and you're like, hey, Checking to see how much my insurance covers braces. Oh, we don't cover adult braces. It's like, well, I didn't need them until I was an adult. So, but yeah, so I'm not looking forward to that. I also have some, have some teeth removed for it because I have a misaligned bite. So for them to correct it, they have to pull some teeth out. I am definitely dreading that. That has been like, I'm like, please knock me out. Chloroform me or laughing gas me or whatever the hell you want to do. But, uh, Gosh, I'm probably just gonna have to suck it up and just have them numb me. My biggest thing is like, I don't want to hear the noise, you know? So if you had teeth taken out before and it's no big deal, please tell me. Because <laughs> I am not good at being at the dentist. So, and obviously I'm gonna have to be there a lot, you know, once I get this grill put on. So, but I'm looking forward to correcting this ish <laughs> right here. So that's exciting. And I've been putting it off for so long, you know, because of the whole mom thing. You know, I've been a single mom for a while and it's always, oh, you can't do that for you. You got to do this for the kids. So then now my, both my kids are out of school now and it's time to think about mom, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's kind of a nice thing. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that, but also drying it. So, um, next time I'll see you guys probably in two weeks or so, just depending on progress, uh, I'm thinking I'll probably get a little bit more done on this, but I might be working on something else by the time I see you guys next. So anyways, if you want to keep up on me, uh, follow me on Instagram. It's Sharky Stitcher, just like this channel. Uh, I post on there a little bit more frequently just because it's easier to put a few pictures up than shoot a video and upload it and all that fun stuff. So if you want to keep up on me a little more currently, feel free to head on over there. And yeah, I will see you guys over there. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.